<clears throat> Five, four, three, <clears throat> two, one. All right. It's Mario and Alex time. It uh, is. The two favorite chiropractors for El Paso. Okay. Yeah. We're going to be. Functional medicine, Alex. That's what we're going to do, right? Yeah, it's 2020, we're, baby. Tw- Functional medicine. 2020. We're going to be focusing on BMIs and we're going to be focusing on everything. Mario, my awesome, my awesome co host here. We're, yeah. we're tearing it up. We're going to give some points of view. Uh, we're going to be discussing certain things. Uh, today, our focus is going to be on anthropometric measurements and measuring the body composition, wow. rationale, wow. and its interpretation, baby. I'm afraid All of right. that. All right, Mara. I'm afraid of measurements, Alex. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. I don't want measurements around my body, okay? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, Mario. Yeah. Right, we gotta, yeah, Mario, we got to get a little, a little knowledge here. Okay. Hey, well, what we're not going to do is we're not going to try to make this boring. So no. if you really want to see boring, uh, I think we yeah. got plenty of examples of what boring looks like. Yeah. Have, have you seen those boring guys, Mario? You know, it's know. like uh, the body got, measurement of I what's got, going on. I don't know. I got um, one over here. You, yeah. Of how good the BMI is to diagnose obesity. So what we found was that um, BMI... If okay, BMI, you know what? I can go to sleep with that one, Alex. Yeah, that's what I'm talking yeah, about, Mario. I can, <clears throat> I can go to sleep and, and, uh, and just shut it off. But, you know, learning has to be fun. It has to be interactive. And it has to be functional. So that's what we're Absolutely. about. Absolutely. I totally agree. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to bring the facts as it can be, and we're going to try to bring it with a little bit of slopstick fun. So it's yeah. going to be fun. Mario, tell me a little bit about uh, your interpretation of, of BMI as how people understand basal metabolic rate. or Well, well, this is, this is what I understand uh, and what I hear about basal metabolic rate. Bottom line is, can you put your belt around your pants <laughs> and can you tuck your shirt in? How about that? Uh, you know what? That's pretty scientific oh, well, right there. That, that is scientific. Yes. That, that is scientific. It that is. We could talk pear. We could talk apple sizes, uh, apple shapes, body types. and But we want to get specific here because people want to know okay. uh, what's going let's, on let's here. Let's start. Okay? Let's so go. So one of the things that we can do is we can start discussing calculating energy requirements because one of the things that, that we want to see, as you can see, I put up here a little bit of facts so that it can help us out a little bit in terms of figuring out what's the best approach in terms of what we do. Now, you can tell here that sedentary, no exercises. What we want to do is talk about basal metabolic rate. Okay, so they, this is a measurement that is occurred by height, uh, height as well as weight index. Height and, and weight. Height and weight. So yeah. it comes out to that number, and we can start looking at calorie, caloric intake, burn. But when we do a BMR and we calculate this number, we typically want to get about a 1.2. Um, and that's what they what, what would be normal in, in, in most situations if you're sedentary. Light activity, we start noticing that there's an increased uh, activity expenditure, and BMR should be 1.375. Um, if you are moderately active, you should start doing that. So in, in, in its interpretation, Mario, when you see these kind of things, and these kind of figures, what does it bring to mind for you in terms of, of these numbers? As we keep on going back to this, we'll be able to see exactly what's going on. What's your in incentive sense of the 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 rates and the metabolic processes? Well, you again, very simple. We need to look at it as the more active you are, the higher your metabolic rate is. That's right. it. So so uh, at, at the end of the day, uh, we want to put it in very simplistic terms to to the public. We want to be more active. How about that? So science is supporting that, you know, park the car as far away as possible from the Walmart entrance and uh, your work. So by doing that every day, you are creating a higher function, okay, metabolic. That's, that's the burn. That's your, that's your whole system burning fuel in, within yourself. So it's simple. And, and uh, the studies are showing that the more active you are, the higher your uh, metabolic rate is. It can go up to 1.9 from a 1.2, correct? Exactly. So what we're looking at here is that the requirements are going to be pretty high if you are one of those people that are very active. So ultimately, our goal is to get you as active or what your your lifestyle could you know require. So you know if you're 
if you're a mechanic, you say moderately active. If you're someone who works in, let's say, an office, your BMR is going to be calculable using these numbers for the body mass index. The whole idea is, is try to figure out a body mass index using the BMR. So the BMR rate allows us to kind of give an estimate, a best estimate as to where your BMR should be at. And then we can use the same number, this BMR, to, do, to assess your body mass index. So our goal is to continue with kind of learning about this thing. And as we kind of go through that, we look at body measurement types. Now, in the past, what we've looked at in terms of this, we, we, we assess the body in a bunch of different ways. Historically, we've been able to do a weight, underwater weight assessments. Remember, Mario, we used to have mm -hmm. like a tank and put someone in water, have them float, actual measure the oxygen consumption. Those were the um, the old methods. The 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 true standard way of doing uh, our fat analysis, pretty expensive sometimes. We use a DEXA test. The DEXA is the similar test that, that is used for bone density. We can actually do that. We also have, a, historically, the body pod test. Now, I know that you have noticed uh, di different types of tests, and, and we're going to put up yeah. here. What are the, the tests that you've seen? The other, it, Alex, on, on that one, when you're talking about the underwater um, weighing and DEXA and even the, the uh, body, body pod, pod, mm -hmm. body pod uh, those are, are, again, more research-based, more scientific. Exactly. In that. So when you're looking at that, uh, I look at it from my perspective – um, you know, what's functional? What, exactly. what can everyone do? So exactly. skin, skin fold is easy, yes. you know, skin <laughs> fold and, and, uh, and the, uh, um, the BIA, BIA and the, uh, Tinnita scale. Scales. Yeah. I mean, that one electrical impulse is going through and you're looking at resistance and impedance. Those are simple. You can just buy from Walmart or anywhere and, and step on it. Make sure you don't, you don't eat. Uh, and uh, make sure you don't uh, drink before you do your test. So do, do it early morning, let's say 6, 7 o'clock right. on an empty stomach, so you can get some good readings with, uh, with the scan. And also, uh, you know, skin folds easy. And, and again, with the BMI, you're looking at weight divided by twice your height, your height squared. Exactly. So that's that's kind of like simplistic view in terms mm -hmm. of BMI. Anyone can do it. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. So those are those are right now. Those are the standards. Those are the things. Most of the times when you go to uh, to your trainer, most of the time when you go work out in your CrossFit gym or your your uh, you know what I call functional gym. Now people are going into more a functional aspect of uh, of fitness. So so they they incorporate less wear and tear and, and trauma. Now they're looking at skinfold and uh, in-body. They even have the, the new in-body systems that, uh, that are very popular that give you a nice ratio even of, of your hydration, which is really nice. You know, when you actually say that, when we look at this thing like the, the Tanita, um, uh, this scales, like you said, they, you can get them at home. The BIA is where it's at. What we're finding is, is that the, a lot of the studies are reflecting that the BIA actually shows White correlation with accuracy with these more complex underwater weighing as well as the DEXA test. So these standards, research-based, you'd always want to maintain some sort of research-based, uh, at least collaborative information that makes sense, right? So now the BIA assessment machines, they can actually determine through ohms, through impedance, through fat analysis, through actually measuring the electrical current throughout the body, a very accurate approach to uh, weight assessment and you know basal metabolic rates. So now the studies are actually better, and they're easier for people to do, and we don't have to do some real complex things. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, if you can, if you can show everyone the, uh, the body pot, I think that's really cool. That's, that's like a cool thing, you know? I mean, look at that. Can you... Yeah. yeah, I mean so, that's like really so, cool. So, but when, it's, so when you look at a body pod, yeah. right? This is this is incre an incredible thing. But this is not something you would want to no. have in your office, right? Thirty no. to forty thousand dollars, right? Jesus, man, this yeah. is like you I mean, know, it's 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 crazy. I mean, they they they're probably looking at you like they they should have you on the alien channel or something. No. But uh, but the simple one, if you can scroll up on the uh, the uh, BIA, it's a it's a simple machine, and the readings are awesome. You know, the readings are very good. Uh, they're portable. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you can see the resistance uh, level. And you can see the the uh, the phase angle, which is really nice. Because then 
you're looking at at very specific patterns in terms of your your metabolism. Absolutely. These tests now are available in most people's most most clinics or at least the clinics mm-hmm. that focus on fu- and functional fitness. Yeah. Um, we have them at the at the at the fitness centers, and many fitness centers have them. And 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 you and I are used to using these things in our offices. So as we do these things, uh, as we assess these things, we really can give kind of a, uh, the patients a a a quantitative point of view that really helps them figure out exactly how they're Everyone, improving. You're exactly right, Alex. You, you know, in in my work. Um, you know, working with athletes and uh, and also what what I call performance performance professions. You yes. know, we're we're talking about military, uh, SF, uh, special forces, rangers, things like that. It's all about performance. So in that, we use calipers. You know, those are very very useful, easy to use, and um, and the one that I particularly like, which um, again with BMI. There are a lot of discrepancies, Alex, and you know this being being uh, you know in in the world of bodybuilding and and the athletics, and all of our kids are athletes. I mean, they're that's just part of the the, the we family are. structure. That's I mean, who that's who we are. That's who you know, we are. you got to run, jump, catch a ball, or or kick a ball, or do something, right? So the point is, in that, what I have found out is that the BMI is not very accurate. Mm-hmm. Not very accurate at all, Alex, when it comes down to athletes. Right. So this is where the discrepancy comes in, where it gets crazy, because now you go to a regular assessment, mm-hmm. a regular assessment or a regular, I don't want to say regular doctor, but, you know, your, your doctor, and then he'll test your BMI, and you'll, you're going to be off. You're going to be high. And, you, and, and you're going to say, you know, you need to get, get your BMI lower. But yeah, the well, point is yeah. that the BMI is the mass, right? Mm-hmm. So again, muscle, muscle is heavier than fat. So so in your in your environment of bodybuilding, what do you think about that? I mean, because I'm sure well, it was well, crazy. Well, one of the things that I've that I've been able to see over the years is that when you have someone as as we understand this, that the BMR is 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 obviously the the thing that we're using to assess that we're using height. And we're using weight, but those numbers get skewed when you have an athlete, and, and they they don't work well for the muscular individual. Someone that's, uh, I mean, my son, he for example, he was 195 pounds, five foot eight. In all reality, he's clinically obese, right? Yet he's shredded and ripped, and and he was a national champion in wrestling, and literally had no body fat. So the the caliper method, the 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 BMR uh, the BMI based on height and weight has deficiencies and that's where the BIA came in and the body impedance assessment that's where yeah, yeah. these studies became very popular and as what we see Mario is that in, in essence when we look at these situations we find out that there are great assessment tools out there uh, these tools are the ones that are actually going to give us the ability to kind of come up with an accurate for a large range of individuals, whether yes. they're, they're bodybuilders, whether they're they're women, uh, there's a standard between you know a good 13% body fat and 29% body fat for females. Women typically have a, a larger number of between 18 and 29% body fat at times. That's their range that is kind of in there. So hopefully they can stick around 22 to 24 uh, boys in the 13 range, just because the the body density is different in a female, right? So what what we look at is what's the norm. One of the things that we can do is try to calibrate people for their numbers so that they make sense for that individual and be able to work them towards it. Because a true athlete will be able to almost blow the BMR, BMI into the wrong number skew. Yeah. And, and if we can get it to a nice number, we're going to have to use a lot of different tools. Now, what we're going to present today are our ideas and fundamental philosophies and knowledge points that we use to determine actual true health, right? So we're going to be discussing those particular issues, and we're going to go over those particular areas here. Now, the BIA is the bioimpedance, okay? So when we look at the bioimpedance areas, we can see that these kind of tests are, are, are not only just affordable, but they actually determine the electrical current. And because of the body amount of muscle fat and the fat that occurs, we're using the fat as kind of like the, 
the the thing that allows us to assess body dynamics as well as body density, right? So as the more there's more impedance or more ohms uh, or more resistance in the body, the greater the body fat. So it's very important that these tests be done properly. Many of the many of the times before you do a BIA, you got to kind of you know you know you got to not you know take first of all you got to be dry, okay? Because if you're sweaty, it throws it off, right? If you're if you eat too much or too many fluids, so typically you try to keep away from foods, eating foods yeah, prior to this, uh, and you and you try to get this thing to work. So resistance, as we look at it, are the things that we're trying to measure. So one of the things that when you look at these particular graphs, you see low resistance associated with large amounts of body fat mass, which is where the body is stored, right? So when we look at this, this is one of the areas we can kind of kind of put together when we look at the resistance numbers. Now, as we look at different angles, uh, let's say we got the phase angles, we also look at the ability, this is the new new number that is assessing actually the intracellular and extracellular activity, as well as the permeability of the cells, okay? Now, as we range this, where they're looking at ranges between 0 and 20%, but the, the, the higher the phase angle, okay, the higher the number where it pops, the better it is for the individual. The lower it is, it's not as good. So what we want to do is we want to see where your phase angle is, and we want to be able to assess it as it gets calculated. So one of the things that we look at, we 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 assess this, and our tools that we use, such as the the BIA assessments, such as the in body uh, uh, testing systems, we can actually determine the ranges that are in are, are for the individuals. But here's where 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 things make sense. Um, but what we're in general, when you look at this, Mario, what is your take from when we when we assess this particular uh, type of under, fundamental research technology as we can apply it to athletes? Your daughters are athletes, right? And and do you what what have you used in the past for this? Uh, usually. Usually when they um, when they go into uh, programs, I mean they're they're super fit first of all, so uh, they're looking more at um, anywhere between like performance in terms of speed, agility, and um, and sustainability. Right. Uh, like like uh, you know vertical um, in terms of uh, explosiveness, those type of things. In in the the area of recovery. Recovery and and energy. This is where I can tell you, um, with even the girls and and even uh, even the boys, they've they really focused on the energy consistency. Okay, and and I can see even with this, which which is critical, the the phase angle. Again, the lower the phase angle, it, it shows the inability of the cell to to store. To store, uh, you know, energy. So that's why that storage of energy, Alex, is real critical. Because why? That is where we get the maximum output. And everyone is talking about performance, and performance is about what output. So if that cell, if that cell cannot store the energy, it cannot release the energy and perform. So, so that's how how nice these are nice markers i would say that with the latest technology we need to use them we need to use them and we need to have benchmarks where it's not just generalities a lot of times we talk about generalities how are you doing i'm doing good you know i had a good workout well what does it mean to be to have a good workout and what does it mean to have a great workout the difference is show me proof show me results it's all about results so the better I guess a, a good takeaway, a good good kind of a, a, a you know assessment for people to look at. Number one, go to a professional and get your BMR and BMI done. That's number one, and and use the equipment and the the specifics so you can mark and you can assess them afterwards. If you don't have a straight baseline. A pre, you will not have a post. And this is the same thing in, in performance. If, if you don't have your, your electronic time in, in track, your pre, then your post is meaningless. You really don't know where you're going. So for, for a lot of the, the performance um, 
I, you know, to me, life is performance. You're going to have to mm-hmm. perform either at work or, or at home, or you're going to perform on, on the field, whatever that may be, on the mat, on the field, um, you know, in your sports. It's about keeping track of markers, your pre and post. That way you know where you're going and you know your, your performance. In, in our world, we love scores. Just imagine going to a game and you never have a score. You, 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 we don't keep score. We just want to have fun. It doesn't, it's not fun anymore. Right. So, so uh, for, for the things that, that we're covering today, in terms of the, the instruments, the methods of measuring body composition, all the way from professional DEXA and and uh, water displacement and body pods to skin folds, you know, everyday use that that you can just buy it at your local Walmart anywhere, uh, and and do the caliper test. That's that's a great baseline. And exactly. and with and with a lot of the uh, uh, the trainers, uh, make sure that when you are training with someone, make sure that they do a baseline so you know you you know and they know where you're at and the performance and the programming it's real important to understand programming there has to be a scaling there has to be a periodicity yes. in that development and and i know when 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 alex Lou alex was training for for state you know in the wrestling there has to be a periodicity. You can't just go hard and go home like everybody says. No, you have to have your your point of of performance, and you've got to have your track, your flow to that. Just like when when um, when Mia is is training for nationals or international competition in tennis, there has to be a plan where she is developing to peak at that time. Is that correct? Yes, 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 yes. That's that's so critical. And we, you, cannot create that plan to peak at that specific if you're in the dark in terms of having a knowledge of where you're at. And I, and I think for, for our listeners and our viewers, it's critical and, and it's very, very easy to get. I think sometimes people get lost like, oh, you know, <laughs> BMI. I, w- I would venture to say... 80% of the people that are listening today right. or they're watching this video have no clue what BMI means. They heard about it, but right. they have no clue what it is. Yeah, They think it's some scientific something in life. No, it's not. Right. We want to bring it down to earth, down into your living room, where you can actually do a BMI for your kids. Right. Yeah. Why right. don't we do that? Why don't we do a BMI for your kids? Do, do it for your husband, your wife. Make sure you know where you're at. Again, with, with a BMI... And and this you know refresh my memory, the the target is nineteen to twenty, okay. nineteen to twenty. Okay. Anything beyond that is obesity. If you're talking about twenty five BMI, you're in obesity range. Right. If you're talking about thirty, you are morbidly obese. And the word morbidly obese means death. That that should get everyone's attention. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, it does. It does. It, it kind of like wakes you up. So what we're looking at is number one, understand where you are, exactly. then measurements, and then also understand that these measurements fit the profile of the person. So if you're a bodybuilder, if you are very heavy muscle bound, okay, then you already know you need to go into impedance, not, not measurements. But what I have found out, a very reliable measurement is the measurement for your waist, and that's where Alex, uh, I want to I want to kind of share this with 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 our listeners and viewers. Just a simple waist measurement is so powerful because it is actually some people say it's better than BMI. It sure is. It right? absolutely is. I mean, actually, yes, it's, yeah. it's it's very much. Yeah, that waist measurement yep. gets down and makes it so simple because that abdominal mass. That abdominal fat is the one that's going to kill you. That's the one that has the highest risk. Is that correct? That's correct. And if your belly is uh, it is it's wide, if it sticks over your of your belt, we got issues. Okay, so we we we're noticing 
that if there's a certain distance between the chest and the waist, those are better measurements in general. Yes. So, so it, it, as as those numbers are are calculated, you don't need a high level test to no. do this. Okay. So, so I like that. So, so it's it's a it's a very it's an, it's an important component to look at. But as we as we as we advance and we're dealing with high performance athletes, people want to know. And and you can take a sport like let's say just wrestling for example. You got these individuals that they, or soccer or soccer, huge, right? Huge, it, yeah, yeah. We're dealing with to assess a, a tight BMI and a tight body mass index. You got to have body fat. You got to have body fat to be able to sustain the loads of of a, of an exercise routine. You're going to see that that during season you got some guys that are that got some good body fat de- density, right? And let's say their their weight class is 198, for example, and the guy's about 215 pounds. Well, if he drops from 215 to 198 overnight, he's going to be exorbitantly exhausted. And and this is something that we're going to see. Now, if he slowly works towards the goal, towards the arena of 198 over a period of two weeks, or if he he's a better off, but let's assume he gets there to the exact body weight at 198 and it's three days before competition. Right. It's going to be exhausting. He's going to be tired. However, if he can get there two weeks earlier and adapt his body as his body starts getting better, it will be able to respond better during the loads that and, he needs. And this is, this is what we are talking about that it needs to be sports specific. You follow me, exactly. Alex? Okay. Exactly. So, so that same conversation cannot cannot be held with a soccer player, exactly, a football player, and a tennis player, or or any anything in that in that what I call long aerobic exertion of of over you know uh, over let's say 10, 15 minutes, and and this is this is what's happening is. And, and I love it when you said that example with, with wrestlers. You know, I would say the same goes towards MMA fighters, which, exactly. which I take care of. Yes. MMA fighters in, in, in Phoenix and, 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 and uh, in different areas. The, then you're talking about also boxers. Again, they have to make weight. Yes. Okay. Though the world of making weight is a beast. That is a world where you have to be on or you're going to die. Exactly. You either go into that fight mm-hmm. feeling like a beast or you, you or you're praying that that it ends quickly. And and so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is you you got to pin him in the first 10 seconds. Yes. So so this is where it's so important that the training, the measurements, the the analytics and metrics you we're in a world of analytics and metrics alex we're not in a world of oh he looks good no no we're, no, we're past no. that we're, we're in, way past no that. mario we're in the world of making sure that when when we wait when we compare the athlete we can measure their changes and 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 every stage down the road as they compete as they become more and more in tune to that moment of competition their body changes. Their bodies adapt. Their bodies become more uh, refined. And as the season gets better, or further along in the season, towards the competitions, towards the 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 season, towards uh, the heavy loads, yeah, that's when we can kind of see how the body's changing. So these tests can actually help us determine how the body reacts. And once these com- these competitors have years of competing, and during those years they have off season and on seasons. And we need to be able to measure those things in a in an easy way. That's what these tests do do. Uh, in terms of tennis, for example, when you've done these kind of things, what have you noticed in terms of, let's say, just the athlete of tennis or even the the boxers that you deal with? What have you noticed in uh, terms of the on specifically the progression through the season? It's critical. It's critical. And and uh, Alex, I can tell you this: that it's not just performance. The other conversation that I think really needs to be dialed in is recovery. Recovery, Alex, okay? And the other one that fits together with recovery is? Phase angle, yeah. Yes, and decreasing injuries. Exactly. That's where it kind of gets real, real crazy because you cannot have this sustainable pattern without 
recovery and without that that specificity and knowing when to push it, when to max out, as they say, and when to shut it down or when to go half speed. And these are conversations that are really, really critical for young athletes, Alex. Yes. I see a lot of them, you know, and they're starting nowadays, they're starting earlier. They're starting at six and seven years old. Mm. Six and seven. Let me tell you, your body hasn't even woke up to the conversation of sports yet. And they are practicing three times a week, having games every weekend, or some of them practice three times a week with one team and then go with another team and practice the other two days just so they can be at at their best peak. Six or seven, Mario. So we, Crazy. We, what sports are you dealing with that are that kids are doing six or seven? They're Which, running like right now, I, I have I have patients that are doing basketball and track at the okay. same time. Yeah. And they're in middle school. That's Jesus amazing. Friend, this is crazy. Yeah. So 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 this is my my question, our question. We're 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 here to help the community. We're here to to help the parents because their vision is my little kid's going to be a superstar. Right. He's right. going to sign a D1 contract, UT Austin, Texas Tech, guns up, baby. <laughs> yeah. Guns up or U of A, right? Yeah. yeah. U of A, Wildcats. Yeah, yeah. Wildcats. Wildcats. <laughs> No, no, you know Wildcats, and I'm and I'm thinking, you're not going to make it past high school. I mean, you're not going to make it past Montwood or past uh, Franklin. I mean, you, you you are going to hit the wall so hard, so hard with repetitive traumas, okay? And and so those are the components that, to me, as a healthcare provider, as a, as a you know a sports functional medicine, cognitive coach. I mean, I, I, I need to teach people this. I Forget taking care of injuries. I want to I wanna teach you so you don't get injured. It's critical. And then they go into middle school and high school, and there's no season off. There is no season so, off. So in, 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 in your opinion, uh, what have you seen these tests do in, in order to help the parent or the athlete or the individual uh, or the coach, for that matter, uh, understand as a as a form of, of of betterment for them. What what do we get out of these tests in terms of the athlete? Very simple. There's a time to turn it on and a time to turn it off. Okay, so you reach your goal, rest. Okay, you you you've done the tournament. Recover, get the recovery, get the get the mind and body to recover, Alex. A lot of times we don't even think about the mind. Yeah, the mind it gets beat up in the in the in the war, in the battlefield of performance. The mm-hmm. mind gets beat up. Yes. Okay. It affects your sleep pattern. It affects your focus, emotions, anger management, all of those all of those things. So what I would say is. We're here. We're here to share knowledge and and tools for health, but most of all for performance. Yes. So that way, each child and and each person. Let's say you're not in in middle school or high school. Let's say you're you're in your twenties and thirties and forties. Well, you're performing for life, and and so let's let's really invite everyone to learn more, to, to look up BMI, BMRs, all of these, and incorporate them into their plan of workouts and challenge them and mm-hmm. ask them, when's the last time you got measured? How about that? Yeah, when's we, the last time? We have to kind of teach people that, that these tests are not, you know, in any point just one test. You have to follow through these tests for a, a lifetime to see what's actually going on. If you really have a center where you can go to uh, and and the and and the BIA tests are so simple now that we and, and the correlation between the highest level of research is shows that we're very very tight less than 1% variation from clinical research methods 
So we know that the BIA works in terms of extremity inflammation, in terms of joint swelling, uh, in terms of uh, the metabolic processes for the mass density in the in each extremity. So if you have one muscle that is larger on one side as a result of an injury from the other extremity, we'll be able to see the changes. So the studies are very clear now. We, we use phase angles to determine health. We use fat analysis. We use the changes and the progression during a very athletic uh, era uh, or a very athletic season is very important to be able to determine. So that today we're starting the children a lot younger. We're starting them at four, five, six years old. As, as, as the child has to, around four years old, as long as they can focus, as long as they can pay attention, that's when we start them active. So it is wise to start the process of understanding the, the, the metabolism methods that we use to calculate body mass index through their, through their ages so that we have a measurement of what's normal for that particular child. Because uh, what we really have to see is what's good for that individual. Uh, specific gravity is another method to determine if you're cutting down too much, but that's another 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 topic. But right. this particular issue is particularly on on the body mass index, and what what we want to do is we want to bring that to the to the towns and, and to El Paso particularly because we 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 have those research capacities here. Um, specifically the ones that we have liked is, 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 is body, body, you know, body mass indexes. So in, in body is, is one of the most top used. They use it at UTEP. They use it at the top research centers and it's pretty much the standard now. And, yeah. and, and since we use it, 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 it offers us an ability to quickly assess an individual. Um, I, I've been at UTEP, I've seen the types that they use and it's very accurate. And since we've seen the research that, that it follows, then now we know that this stuff is, this is very accurate. And specifically now you can actually assess your own and have it online and determine it through, through a method where you can keep up with your, with your child to see what's going on. Um, any other ideas, any other comments that you have, Mario, in terms of bringing this logic or, or this kind of approach to understanding basal metabolic indexes to the public? I would say, uh, Alex, uh, number one, let's make it very simple. You know, let's make it very simple. So, so with that, uh, this is, this is as simple as getting on a scale to see how much you weigh. That's it. So let's, let's bring that conversation to everyone so everyone gets a scan minimal minimal i would say seasonal every season you should get a scan you should get a a bmi you should have you, you should log it in just like your weight you know let's let's be functional let's let's think of of ourselves as important as our cars right so so i look at it as you have a little tag up on your windshield that says oil change, you know? So why don't we, why don't we do this? Why don't we have, and, and I really challenge everyone listening, and, and you know, we're here because we, we need to, to take care of our community. You know, our community is, is probably one of the highest rate of diabetes in a nation, okay? And, and all of that Mario, sort of starts. Mario, Mario, Yeah, yeah, if I'm you, sorry. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want to say it, but it, you have to. There's a big old elephant in the room, but El Paso, our town, was considered the fattest, sweatiest town in the whole United States at one point. Um, that sickened me when I heard it. It was a different town. We are much more advanced. There were very few gyms. Now we're all about fitness. So if we're going to be the leaders out there, and man, I got to tell you, we got some beautiful athletes coming out of El Paso now. Absolutely. Okay? We got one of the tops. Uh, we can put our athletes against the best, even the most uh, well-bred top schools. So Absolutely. As, as we compete in those areas, uh, we really want to use the tools that all the other places use in order to assess our athletes, our children, uh, and our high-performance individuals. So it's very important we do that kind of stuff now because we have the technology. And no longer is El Paso going to be the fattest, sweatiest town of, of the United States. That's, that's, that's unforgivable. Uh, you definitely agree with that. Yeah, yeah. so just bringing that and, and the, the vision that, that I would like to share is that the measurement, the simplicity of, of just getting your, your weight and your height is now complemented with a BMI that you understand. You have some goals. It's 2020. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's 2020, baby. You know what? 2020 means that let's do better than last year. Let's be healthier than last year. And let us integrate and and have a better understanding and better objective plan for our own health. And with this, I would say this test and the, the body measurement index is a word and, and a, a understanding that needs to be spread throughout families. So, so the family can talk about that, like, hey, what are we doing? How, how are we doing? Okay? And then with that, use it accordingly, okay, accordingly to create positive outcomes, whether it's just to be able to, to play with your child if you have children that's your sport. Your sport is not to sit and watch. Your sport is to participate. Throw the ball, kick the ball, run with your child. Or if your child is really into sports, give him the tools. Give her, her the the best tools. They're not that expensive. No, they're, they're available. <laughs> so that way they can get training that is on point and results that are extraordinary. Exactly. I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, We have the technology. It's here. This is not the six million dollar man kind of world or this is not outside of our realm. We can give it to our kids. We can show them. Uh, Parents become the educators. Uh, They they are the ones that that seek out the coaches. They are the ones that are the nutritionists for the children. They are the ones that are the psychologists. That every aspect of developing a child requires a lot of different aspects. So uh, those parents that have athletes, uh, athletes that want to learn more about their bodies, um, the world of, of heavy tech uh, research methods are over. Now it's simple. You get on scale, really accurate uh, methods, uh, and you can monitor your body uh, a few times a year, uh, two, three, four times a year, depending on on your your type of sport and your level of of performance these are the things we can do and and we need to provide that information so that you have tools in order to gauge you can't get in a car without looking at a speedometer you don't know how fast you're going you don't know if you're going too far you don't know if you're having protein uh metabolic catabolism which is breakdown or if you're anabolic so these are the tools that help us figure things out you don't know if certain joints or certain extremities are swollen because of just water or if it's just protein breakdown these tools we can actually see inside the body and monitor the improvement or changes so the world changed so now el paso we have the ability to to change the way we understand our our own physiology as well as the the, the patient's physiology and our client's physiologies. So um, I welcome this technology and by, by no means uh, is it limited to anything that we do. This is uh, many providers in, in the town can do this. Many uh, hospitals have it, uh, but for facility, it's, it's in within our practices as well. So we use those things. So uh, I look forward to being able to share this with, with the, the patients as well as the town. Absolutely. Um, I, uh, Second emotion on that, Alex, and uh, the challenge and the um, motivation and passion that we're going to have this year in 2020 absolutely, is to uh, not only motivate and be cheerleaders for functional health and fitness, yeah, and fitness, but also to um, educate and empower the community with the latest technology and knowledge so they can do their best. Amen, brother. This is uh, awesome, and uh, I look forward to being able to continue. We're going to be coming uh, at you uh, often uh, because we're motivated. We're parents, and uh, we we want to be able to touch our El Paso and make it a better place. Because um, you know, without getting too crassy, we're pretty pretty badass, as they say, right? Yeah, we were pretty pretty intense in our town, right? Yeah, Mario. Don't. Don't get me started. Ah, they're gonna have to. No. They're gonna have no, to. No. They're gonna have to shut me down. <laughs> no, 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 no. We won't do that. <laughs> we'll come back later, guys. We'll go ahead and see this the show, and it's been a blessing. So, from all of us here, we can actually see how you guys are doing. So, blessings to you guys. Thank you, guys. Bye, bye.